Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got the Gamo Varmint Stalker Barricade on the test bench, but first I'm heading out to the pastures to stalk some wary rabbits. Right, we're out on the farm after rabbits this evening. This permission to not particularly overrun with rabbits, but there are quite a few around now. So what I'm trying to do is make quite frequent visits, short visits. Most evenings I'm managing to pick off two or three, so I'm just chipping away, keeping numbers in check. I've timed it perfectly this evening. It's been a lovely warm day. Obviously rabbits are nocturnal animals. It's about two or three hours before nightfall. So I'm hoping that they'll start venturing out to feed soon. So that should work in our favour. I'm hunting on the move this evening. I'm going to be stalking. Now that makes it a bit more challenging. Because I'm moving around, there's that much more chance of being detected. I'll be making more noise. However, it is really satisfying. It involves a lot more field craft. So if it goes to plan, it'll be a much more rewarding hunt than an ambush. It also means that I can explore much more of the farm and I can earmark areas that do seem to be a bit more overrun if there are particularly busy warrens and I can come back another evening when I've got more time and set up an ambush there. So let's go and give it a go. And with that, I'm off. There's a sizeable pest population on this ground, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy. I'll still have to call on my field craft if I'm going to get close to these conies. When I'm, when I'm stalking rabbits, certainly a place like this, I'm trying to use the contours of the hill and any existing cover. So there's lots of natural cover here in the shape of the gorse. I'm trying to hug that as closely as I can just to keep my outline as concealed as possible. From a camouflage point of view, that's not quite so important. Rabbits don't have terrific eyesight. So in choosing camouflage patterns, I'm not worrying as much as I usually would, and certainly the trousers I've got on this evening are actually quite light, and they're probably better suited to corn stubbles than they are pasture. However, they're about the quietest pair that I've got, which is perfect for stalking rabbits. Although they can't see brilliantly well, rabbits are very sensitive to sound and to vibration, so you don't want to wear a jacket that's got a jingling zip or poppers that are rattling together. Sound is one of the, the prime concerns. I'll also be treading very lightly, I'm keeping my footfalls as gentle as possible because again, rabbits can detect that vibration through the ground even if they don't hear it. And if that spooks them, they'll be gone. I've also forfeited a head net tonight. I don't tend to like wearing a head net when I'm stalking, mostly because I like to keep my field of view as wide as possible. So I can see where I'm putting my feet and I can also keep an eye on my quarry. If I've spotted a rabbit and I'm closing in, I want to try and read its body language. If the rabbit's feeding and seems quite oblivious to my presence, I'll continue to creep that bit closer and take advantage of that. The moment the rabbit becomes alert, if it sits up, ears up on point, sounding out for anything suspicious, then I'll freeze. I, I don't want to get rumbled then, so that's my cue to stop dead still. All being well, the rabbit won't run in. I'll wait until it relaxes. Once I see it feeding again, I'll continue with the stalk very slowly, very quietly, until I get to where I think I can take the shot from. Crossing into a different part of the permission, I'm eager to put the theory into practice. It's a great day to be out, and a walk and stalk is always an interesting affair, but it'll take more than interest to keep rabbit numbers down. I need bunnies in the bag, and thankfully, it's not long before I get close to one. This rabbit has stopped on the brow right ahead of me, and thankfully it hasn't made a dash for cover just yet. It's partially obscured, but the headshot is on. I know my Daystate Mark IV is more than up to the task, and I'm confident in the shot.
Brilliant. First one of the session, that's a great start. Well, that was a great start. Uh, just came up over the brow. There were a couple of rabbits out. This one lingered just long enough to offer a shot. It was sat up, it was alert. Probably about 25 metres, didn't need to get any closer and if I tried it would probably have run in. So uh, for a freestanding shot, clean shot in the head, really pleased with that, great start. With one in the bag, I decide to stalk along the top of the ridge. There's enough cover up here to prevent my outline being too obvious and it provides an excellent vantage point from which to spot my quarry. Spying one lower down, amid a new plantation, I decide to break cover to get within range. Keeping low to reduce the size of my silhouette and stalking extra slowly, I eventually make it to a suitable shooting location. That cartwheel confirms another clean kill, and another precise shot from the day state. That's a bigger one. Decent sized rabbit that. Slightly further shot, I spotted it as I emerged from behind the, uh, the tree over the brow. Used the tree guard for a bit of cover to stalk in closer. Obviously I wanted to get near enough to take a headshot. Rabbit's a relatively large quarry for air guns, so I limit myself to headshots whatever sort of air gun I'm using. So uh, using the brow as a bit of a backdrop, I crept down to the tree guard, took a kneeling shot, like I say a bit longer than the last one, probably around about 30 meters, maybe a little bit more. Hit the rabbit clean in the head, sent it into a cartwheel, but it was stone dead. It's a, another welcome addition to the bag. I can get the other one now. Two rabbits might not be a record-breaking bag, but it's about on par with my previous outings on this farm. I'm not calling it a day yet though. It's gone well so far and I have ground left to cover. The stalk is on once more. Just as I'd hoped, I've got a chance at a third rabbit just minutes later. It's within range now, but won't stay broadside long enough for a guaranteed headshot. A quick squeak soon solves that problem. It's another hit and I walk in to collect my prize. That's made it a hunting hat trick, but before I can start thinking about that well-earned stalker's supper, I've got one more task to attend to. Right, well, it's been a really good evening. We've uh, accounted for three rabbits, it's gone very well. All that's left to do now is to paunch them. Doing it in the field obviously saves with having to deal with and dispose of the mess back at home. So I've found quite a discreet, quiet place away from where dog walkers might happen across the intestines and entrails that I leave behind. Um, in all honesty, there are so many badgers, badgers, foxes and buzzards around here that anything I leave behind will be gone well before the morning. So let's get cracking. I'm going to begin by just draining the bladder. 
because I don't want to put the knife through that. This one's actually already empty. I've got quite a small knife here, it's a small sharp knife. You don't need a big cleaver or a big machete for this job. In fact, you just want something that's manoeuvrable and sharp. So what I'm going to do is just get the legs apart, take my gloves off. It might seem a bit of a wuss putting on a rubber glove for paunching, but the great advantage is that when I'm done, I can drive home without smearing a hand that stinks of rabbit's guts all over the steering wheel. I just pinch that up and make a cut into there. I'm not quite deep enough. Right, and what I'm being very careful not to do is to puncture the guts because I don't want to take the meat. And I've made that first hole and I'm just going to slice that up towards the ribs and back down again, minding my fingers. Put the knife out of the way, that should be enough. And what I'm going to do now is just give it a bit of a shake out. Now there are all kinds of clever techniques. Some shooters can flick the paunch right out. I've tried it once or twice, never with any success. Once with a face full of guts. Um, so I'll resort to using my fingers. I've got the cavity there. The guts are fairly clear. So fingers into the top and just pull it out and away. And there we go, that's one done. Right, so on to the second one. Same process. Start by emptying out the bladder. There's a bit in that one. The legs apart. Lift up a fold of skin. In with the blade. Open that up towards the chest back down the other way, quick flip, fingers in, and away it comes. And on to the third and final one, pinch up that skin, or cut up, back the opposite way, quick flick just to free it up. Fingers in and behind, and a quick pull and away it comes. So there we go. Right, and with that done, obviously, it's just a question of pulling off the glove. It comes off inside out, so you can fold it up, pop it into your pocket and bin it when you get home. Nice clean hands. So they're gonna make a really great supper. Now obviously what I need to do when I get home is a proper thorough job, skinning them, jointing them, and that's a job you do really want to do in the cleanliness of the kitchen back at home. So it's been a great evening. I'm looking forward to tucking into those. A lovely evening out stalking grass gobblers, even if it wasn't a massive bag. And now, it's over to the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News, brought to you by gunbid.co.uk. Airgunners were treated to the unveiling of several impressive new airguns at the Midland Game Fair last weekend. On Saturday, Showgoers got a first look at the new Gold Star SE from BSA. Named after the Birmingham gunmaker's iconic multi-shot underlever from the 1990s, the new PCP brings the Gold Star label bang up to date. Aimed at HFT shooters and hunters alike, this gun cost £899. It features an ultra-adjustable ambidextrous stock for perfect gun fit, with woodwork options including traditional walnut, eye-catching red, white and blue or a classy black pepper laminate. 
It's available in a single shot or with BSA's new 6th generation 10 shot magazine. The regulated gun also features an air stripper, BSA's famously accurate cold hammer forged barrel and an onboard pressure gauge. It turns out 120 shots in 1.77 caliber and 150 in 0.22. Also aiming to meet demand for match-winning performance on the target range, Air Arms unveiled its new HFT 500. Based on the proven 500 series side lever action, the single shot HFT features a longer, higher capacity air cylinder for even greater consistency over a string of 90 shots. It's got an adjustable butt pad, goes up and down. You can add spacers in here if you want to extend the reach to the trigger. It's got a nice adjustable cheek piece with a ball mechanism underneath here so you can cant the cheek piece over, move it around. But it is fully ambidextrous, this stuff. The pistol grip's ambidextrous as well and it's very, very comfortable pistol grip. The trigger's a new trigger unit and it's uh, given a, a, an adjustable trigger blade with this new trigger guard but that's allowed the trigger blade to come back, so the reach to the trigger is very comfortable. It's a single shot rifle in 177 and uh, side lever, match trigger, and a unique colour coding on this. It's got the ultimate sporter laminate in the, in the woodwork, but this really nice grey finish on the bolt housing and also on the muzzle flip deflector. The show also saw the launch of the sumptuous Day State Forester LE. Based on the Wolverine C-Type Supergun, the Forester includes, by popular demand, a stock design that was only previously available on the Export 303 model. On the limited edition, we've used the Wolverine 303 stock in this beautiful forest camo pattern, and we've incorporated one or two other features, including some beautiful engraving and a new finish on the shroud. There's only 150 of this type of rifle, 170 in total, and they're going into the shops next week. The Prestige air gun is available in 0.177 and 0.22 caliber at 1,600 in legal limit power option and 1,750 pounds for the high power 0.22 FAC version. Also in the news this week, North Hearts Air Weapons Club is desperate to find a new home. Formed more than a quarter of a century ago, the club was based at Hitchin Swimming Pool. The facility included four 6-metre pistol ranges and eight 10-metre rifle ranges. The local council will not extend the club's lease because the building has a leaky roof and it closed its doors for the last time in August. Committee member Paul Conda described the closure as a blow for club members, championship shooters and shooting in general. If you know of a suitable indoor or outdoor venue for the club in the Hitchin area, please contact them on 01462 626 374. Following Scotland's no vote to independence, Basque Scotland has pledged to work with the Scottish Government to ensure shooting continues to be supported and encouraged. Shooting makes an important contribution to Scotland and latest research shows that it influences the management of 4.5 million hectares. It generates £200 million for the economy every year and supports the equivalent of 8,800 full-time jobs. The Scottish Government's current proposals include a licensing system for air guns in spite of the fact that the country's gun crime figures are at a 33-year low. Basque Scotland is opposed to the scheme, which it describes as unnecessary and costly, and says any new laws, policies or guidance should be based on sound evidence. That was the Egan Show News. Up for review this week is the Varmint Stalker Barricade from Gamo. It's an eye-catching brake barrel springer and this particular model comes with a 4x32 scope and mounts. Simply add a tin of pellets and it's ready for action.
My first impression of this gun is it's a, it's a nice looker. It's long, lean lines. They put me in mind of a classic big game gun. The olive green stock is very robust. Wouldn't be out of place in the hunting field where I'm sure it will help with concealment too. The ambidextrous synthetic stock looks like it'll stand up to a fair amount of stick. Uh, it's also got a nice long fore end so that enables you to get a really good purchase of the front end of the gun and it, it gives good balance. There are rubberized black stippled grips in the fore end too and that improves grip. They're also present in the pistol grip. The cheek piece is raised and that's also in that rubberized finish. And it's just about high enough to give decent eye alignment with a telescopic sight. But if you go with mounts much higher than these, you may find it a little bit low. The synthetic stock keeps overall weight down to about three kilos and the gun doesn't feel at all front heavy. At the butt end is a very soft recoil pad and it's got rubber inserts that push out to make it softer still. Gamo says that that reduces felt recoil by up to 74% and I've certainly not noticed any excessive kick. The Stalker Barricade is a well-built gun with a good clean finish. The Ball Whisper barrel is a really distinctive feature of the gun. There's a rifled steel barrel and that sits within this fluted polymer shroud. There's an integral sound suppressor in there. It doesn't silence the gun right down, but then on a springer I wouldn't expect it to, but it does make a difference. It also looks pretty neat and it makes for a good grip when it comes to cocking the gun. The polymer coating on the barrel means there's actually very little exposed metal on this gun. It's the sort of air rifle you could use for controlling feral pigeons or rats around the farm without being in constant fear of hitting it. If you knock this barrel, you're not going to leave bare metal exposed to the elements with the risk of rust. This particular model doesn't come with open sights so it's straight on with the tellies, which are actually pretty decent little optics. They come with a sturdy set of mounts which feature a pin that can drop down into one of three holes on top of the rail here which stops the scope creeping under the recoil of the gun. Or you can screw in this bolt and butt the rear mount up against that and it acts as an arrestor plate. The brake barrel cocking mechanism will be familiar to most air gun shooters. On the barricade, it takes a swift tap to free the barrel before heaving it down. And it is quite a long stroke. The barrel almost reaches the stock before the sears engage. It's quite a heave, but then this is a full powered gun. But it's also a very smooth action. There's no grinding or graunching. In time-honoured tradition, the pellet's loaded direct to the breech. You then swing the barrel up, where it locks into place with a click. And it is a very solid lock-up with no hint of any play. The safety catch is manual, so you'll need to set that yourself. It's a little bit close to the trigger for my liking, but it does work well and can be reset if need be. Moving on to the trigger, I'm always disappointed to find a plastic blade. But does it make any difference to performance? Probably not. The broad, flat front edge of this blade is actually very comfortable, though it is quite a reach from the pistol grip. But that said, this is an adult-sized air gun which measures up at 114 centimetres, so it's not really intended for young shots and small hands. The trigger is a two-stage unit, and it's actually pretty good. The second stage is quite long and fairly heavy, but there's no hint of any creep, and it's very easy to predict. Well, that's a quick once-over of the gun's main attributes. Let's see how they come together on the range.
Well, that's a decent group. It's quite a blustery day today, as you can probably see, so we pulled the target card into just short of 20 metres. These four shots have fallen into a group of about 15 millimetres, which I'd say is more than accurate enough for hunting out to that range. Suffice to say, I dragged this one wide, no doubt a result of that heavy second stage on the trigger. But with a bit more practice, I'm sure I'd become accustomed to that and be landing all of the shots within this group. Felt recoil was negligible. Now, whether that's a result of that recoil pad, I don't know, but it certainly had no ill effect on accuracy. Well, the Gamo Vironment Stalker Barricade has given a good account of itself. And this is a gun and scope combo that retails for less than 170 pounds. It falls into the backyard plinker price bracket, but apart from being a fun gun to use, it's also a full size, full power air gun that will lend itself to close to mid range pest control. It really is a decent package. That's it for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. That's Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Yeah.